Hey everyone, it is Miss Stone. Welcome to week five of virtual learning. I can't believe it is already week five. So we are finishing out our standard over the last two, the previous two weeks, we have looked at pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And now we are moving on to how we can use penny, pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters and solve word problems with them. So our objective for this week is I can solve word problems involving quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. We're going to rely a lot on our previous knowledge that we've been building up over the last couple weeks and really work to figure out how we can best solve word problems that are involving money. We're going to take a look again at our coin chart just to have a quick refresher. At this point, we should be familiar with the four different types of coins that we've looked at. So we're going to start with penny. Once again, it is brown, somewhat looks orange as well. It is worth one cent. It does not have ridges, which means it is not rough on the outside. And on the back, it is a building and it is a medium sized coin. Our nickel is silver, it is worth five cents. Just like a penny, it is smooth on the outside so it does not have ridges. On the back is also a building and it is a medium sized coin, medium -sized coin similar to a penny. Next we have a dime, a dime is silver, it is worth 10 cents. It is rough on the outside, which means around it, it does have ridges. On the back is a torch and two plants. And even though it is worth more than a penny and a nickel, it is smaller than a penny and a nickel. Lastly, we have our quarter, which is silver as well. It is worth 25 cents, which is the most. And it, just like a dime, it does have ridges so that it is not, it is rough on the outside of it. On the back, it has a bald eagle and it is a, the biggest of the coins. So just take a second to look this over again, re-familiarize yourself to the four different types of coins because we're going to have to be very familiar with what each is worth in order to be best at solving word problems. This chart might be helpful for when we are going through and you are working on problems this week for your homework because we're going to be using visuals a lot less in word problems. We're going to be using words to help us step by step figure out clues to solve word problems involving coins, but you're not going to see pictures of coins like we have in the previous weeks. So remembering that pennies are worth a cent, dimes are worth 10 cents, nickels are worth five cents and quarters are worth 25 cents is important and just because you do not have the picture of it in front of you doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to um, strengthen your ability to recognize that and also if you need to pulling this up or drawing your own pictures of coins and labeling them might be helpful as well so that might be a good strategy if you do not have paper and pencil, I want you to pause the video and go grab paper and pencil so that we can take this step by step. So we are going to begin in five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Our first word problem that we're going to take step by step is Mark has five nickels and nine pennies. Does he have enough money to buy a pencil that costs 50 cents? Yes or no? How much money does Mark have? So we're going to take this step by step. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, one, remember that we do not have the visuals we've had in the previous weeks when looking at coins, but that doesn't mean that we can't figure out a way to help us count our coins to figure out if Mark has enough money to buy a pencil that costs 50 cents. So I'm actually going to show you the first part of this and the first part that I'm going to do to help myself get familiar with how to solve a word problem is I'm going to start by drawing five nickels and nine pennies. And an easy way to do this is you can draw a circle and you can put five in the middle for the nickels and for the pennies you can put one. The reason I put five in the middle for the nickels is each nickel is worth five cents. And for the pennies, I put one because each penny is worth one cent. And 
in our next step, I did not actually draw it. I'm going to put the actual coin, but obviously I do not expect you to draw super detailed pennies and nickels, so you can just draw a circle with a 5 and a 1 inside of it. Okay, so step 1. Let's read the word problem again. Mark has 5 nickels and 9 pennies. Does he have enough money to buy a pencil that costs 50 cents? The first thing that we're going to do, so step one, is we are going to draw out our five nickels so that we can see how much, how many nickels there are and how much altogether that is. So based on the past couple of weeks and our ability to count coins together now, we should be pretty good at being able to tell what five nickels is worth. So we have five, ten, fifteen, twenty, 25. When we count those together and we count by fives, we find that when we have five nickels, we have 25 cents and we write that down. So that's our step one. Step one was to show how much five nickels is worth and count it together. Step two now is we have our five nickels shown. Now we need to show our nine cents. So remember the strategy that you're going to use on your paper and pencil is you're drawing circles. So at this point you should have five circles with five in the middle representing the five nickels and then showing that when you add those together it equals 25 cents. And then step two is to write and draw nine circles with one on the inside and count those together because we know a penny is worth one cent. So when we count our pennies together, because we have nine of them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cents. That is our step two. Here we see that we have our steps outlined so far, so we've completed step one and step two. Now we're moving on to step three. If we have all of our money represented from our problem, which again was Mark has five nickels and nine pennies, does he have enough money to buy a pencil that costs 50 cents? We have now shown and represented all of the coins that we have, so we can move on to addition. We know that this is addition because we are counting our money together. So now we need to figure out if we in fact have 50 cents or more or less. We're gonna figure out exactly how much money we have all together. So we're going to take our 25 for the 5 nickels and we're going to add that to our 9 cents for the 9 pennies. And we see here that when we add 25 plus 9, we get 34. Again, before we left from school, we went over double digit addition with regrouping. So this might still be a little bit tricky and a little bit challenging, but we remember that we always start in our ones place. So we start by adding five plus nine. And because five plus nine equals 14, we have to take the one and put it over the two because the two is in the tens place and we get 34. So all together, we have 34 cents. Now we remember that we're trying to buy a pencil that costs 50 cents. So at this point, if we have 34 cents, we're gonna realize we do not have enough money to buy that pencil. So now we have done all of the steps we need to in order to answer our questions. So our two questions are, does Mark have enough money to buy the pencil? And how much money does Mark have? We know that the pencil costs 50 cents, so the answer is no. And then we know that we also added together our coins and counted them up, and altogether Mark had 34 cents. So now we have answered our questions correctly and we figured out how to do our word problem. All right, so here is a quick step-by-step -step as to how we are going to best solve word problems and be able to do it consistently. Obviously, we just went over one, but if we follow these steps, we're gonna be successful in any word problems involving coins that are asked of us. So step one is to always read your problem fully and then read it again. Determine if you're going to add or subtract. You always need to make sure that you're going to do the correct operation. So not every word problem involving coins means that you're going to add. And sometimes you're going to have to do both. You're going to have to do both adding and subtracting. So you need to figure out if you're going to do either addition, subtraction, or both. 
when I used to do work problems in school, I was always very quick to want to skip ahead and just get it done as quickly as possible. But then I learned that if I read my problem and then I read it again and then sometimes had to read it again and again and again to fully understand what it was asking, it would actually be faster for me and I would be able to get the correct answer and not have to do it again. So take your time, read it, and really make sure you know if you're in a add, subtract, or do both. The next step is to step two, use quick and easy pictures of coins to help you find their value. Again, a quick strategy is just to draw a circle and then put the value of the coin um, in the middle. So if we had five quarters, I could draw five circles and put 25 inside each of those circles just to give myself a reminder of what a quarter is worth and to help see how I can add it together quickly and use the pictures to help me. Step three is to add or subtract your coins and find your total value. So if you are adding all of your coins together and you are doing addition in the problem, you're going to do so. If you're doing that with subtraction or if you're doing both, that's going to be your step three in order to find the correct answer. Step four is to answer all questions asked in the problem. And then lastly, step five is to do a quick celebration because you did it and you did an awesome job. All right, awesome job. So we have now looked at this standard for the last couple weeks, and the only part that we have not touched on yet is dollars, and we will get to that at some point. But as of right now, we have pretty much completed what this standard has asked of us, and that is awesome. So thank you for sticking with it for the last couple weeks and really being determined to be able to figure out how to best add coins together, and now we figure out how to do word problems as well. So I'm really proud of everyone. You've been doing an awesome job.